Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Great to be back with Bill Jordan, our favorite philosopher, and my partner, of course, John Coleman, my favorite partner. Hey, Bill. Good to see you again. Good to be seen, guys. Always a pleasure and uh, appreciate you having me on. You know, as our favorite uh, baby boomer philosopher, the man who says we should embrace being baby boomers. Exactly. Um, I love your 15 practices. I don't Thank know you. if everybody knows what they are, but uh, I was looking at them the other day. I looked at number 13, which I thought was just, first of all, what I think about your practice is that they are, they are all short, sweet, simple, and great advice, great ways to live your life. But number 13 says it all, keep it simple. Yeah, and there's lots of ways to look at that, keep it simple. I mean, it's almost, it's another way of saying less is more to me. Yeah. Uh, and that can be with our stuff. And my wife and I are in a two, uh, two story house right now. We're always like, you know, we're going to stay here until we can't take the stairs anymore. But I'm already in a mindset of let's just, we've got to get rid of stuff. How many books do I need? Even, even to the point of like with our landscaping and flower beds and stuff, let's just simplify stuff when we can. Let's simplify stuff. And I've, and I've really been taken with this notion of, and speaking of the keeping it simple and less is more, there's a famous quote from martial artist and movie star Bruce Lee. <laughs> it, and, and, it, and seriously, but you want to talk about philosophy, and it was like, it's, it was something like, it's more than the daily increase. It is the daily decrease. We must hack away at the unessential. That's and that's really stuck with me. And then the other one was, who was the, who was the guy, the sculptor of the famous uh, Statue of David? Was that Leonardo DiCaprio? Who who was that? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. it was, I think it was a, uh, and he he actually he brought it with him on the Titanic. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. but you know he was asked he was asked about the this you know magnificent Statue of David. How did you how did you come to carve him out of this giant block of marble? And his answer was, according to legend. The statue was in, was already there. The statue right. was in the block of marble. All he had to do right. was chip away at the unessential. So I've just gotten this notion of it's not the getting of stuff. It's the kind of, as we peel things away from ourselves, and whether it's our possessions or our thoughts or whatever it might be, I think maybe we get maybe to our truer selves or something. And the less complicated we, we make our lives, the more, the more free we are. Is that not, a, is not, well, is that kind of true? I find I that saw, true. I just saw a video uh, done by a, a friend of mine uh, who's a real estate agent. And she um, made a little video about if you prepping your house for sale, one of the most important, she gave three important things you can do, but one of the most important things you can do is unclutter your house. Absolutely. And, well, and some of that, all the little knickknacks that are around, and of course, you, the pen that you threw on the, the yeah. table when you wrote a note someplace else. Or oh, I'm, hey, behind floor. this camera, behind my laptop, there, my table is full of stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Mary right. and I have been, George, we've been, we, we've been married for over 40 years now, and it's just accumulation of stuff. Right. That That's George one day Coleman, our daughter's uh, going to have to deal with. I'd rather, I'd rather deal with it now. Right. And by the way, so she said one of the things it does is it makes everything look uh, neater and roomier. So in other words, sure. if you unclutter, uh, and it probably has the same feeling for us, although we think all those knickknacks around are part of the fabric of our lives. So perhaps that may not be true if you're going to stay there. But uh, we do from time to time, uh, uh, we're working on a garage now. With stuff that we really we we had that. Why did we even buy it in the first place? <laughs> well, well it, you know, store it in the garage. But, you know, it's <laughs> it's even beyond that when, when we talk about stuff. But I think decluttering, and I've been reminded of this numerous times. It's not just jettisoning, jettisoning, jet getting rid of, <laughs> getting rid of <laughs> our stuff, whether it's clothes or whatever golf clubs you haven't picked up in twenty years. It's more than that. It's our thoughts that don't yeah. serve us anymore. It's our attitudes that don't serve us anymore or beliefs that you no longer have. It's getting rid of that stuff. It's not watching 
TV shows that you're just mindlessly watching. I'm not, you know, I'm certainly not Mr. Perfect at this stuff. I have my guilty pleasures too. But if you get rid of that stuff, then you can, you you make room for the more, the more positive things, perhaps the deeper. Well, also, things. yeah. Also, I mean, I think we all function a little better when we have some thinking time in our lives, mm -hmm. uh, some quiet time. Uh, you know, and we, uh, you're right. When not only do we have a lot of stuff, our mind has a lot of stuff in it. I mean, we're busy all the time. There's so many pressures, so many things to do, so many, whatever. Sometimes you need to just sit and relax and meditate a little bit. Well, here's a, here, here, here's another example. So here's, here's, you know, here's my cell phone. We've all got the, we're all tethered to this, our electronic yep. leech, right? Yep. We've got this. I, I have determined <clears throat> with this, keeping it simple, and the less is more. You know, you can go to your settings on this phone and it will tell you how much screen time, how much you're on that phone every day. Wow. Even yesterday I found out it will tell you how many times you pick up your phone. So I am down 8% from last week. From <laughs> I, I, And I'm, and I'm kind of tracking this because, again, hacking away at the unessential. Why, it's, it's mindless. Yeah, it's you, you. You know, you go somewhere. You're standing in line. You pull out your phone. Hey, what's going on? Oh, Most yeah. of it is this fear of missing out stuff that I need to just kind of get rid of. There's not a whole lot going on that I really need to know about uh, anymore. So, just a simpler life. It's just yeah, man. It's just I, I for me, and it, it's just it's the philosophy that I'm I'm adopting is to keep it simple. But again, keeping in mind. That's more than decluttering, which you know we got a lot to do around here. Um, well, but tackle to, it a little bit. Tackle you. it a little bit at a day, an hour a day of cleaning out a closet or your a, a part of your garage, the shelves somewhere, and then you but, see that progress yeah. and you build on it. Bill, you 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 deserve a compliment because uh, I don't think we've discussed this other than your love of things like hats and old shorts. Uh, but you were. Uh, I, I think this was only offline, so people should know the courage that you have to, and the thoughts of declutter, because I think you were getting rid of some hats, were you not? I, you know what, the hats, believe it or not, speaking of clutter, they are still on the armrest of the couch. In oh, you mean the ones, that, the, the ones <laughs> that you put on, that you posted that you were getting rid of? Yeah. Yeah, and so I was going to put those in a bag and take it down to the Goodwill place, because there are people, there's hats down there, somebody wants a hat, right? So, um uh, yeah, I haven't done that yet, but yeah, I was, you know, I, it's, it's the old and it's one of another, one of my rules. I can't remember the, the number, uh, right now, but it's the Pareto principle of 80, yep. 20, you know, basically what 20, what, what I've got 80, what 20% of my caps do I wear 80% of the time Yeah, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So the ones I'm not wearing, why am I keeping well, you know what? I, I have a thought that maybe what we ought to do is a, do a whole episode on your hats, the ones you still have, and hold them up and say for every mug, for the first 18 people that uh, purchase a Embrace the Boom mug, you get the hat of your choice. With sweat stains, even. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Uh, you know, I, I've got formulas for that, too. I, I'd normally toss them in the dishwasher. Oh. <laughs> So no DNA, no no DNA samples. No, I no, I'm not giving up any DNA. <laughs> Nobody wants any of this. Bill, I love your uh, love your 15 practices, and uh, I love keep it simple. Number 13. Appreciate, appreciate that, guys. Very I'm going to practice it. Thank you, thank you. And I, I do have a YouTube channel. It's just Embrace the Boom on YouTube, and you'll see the videos where I talk about. There's 15 slash 16 practices, and then there's, there's some extra bonuses too. It's just some some uh, some other thoughts, philosophical thoughts about getting a little bit older. So yeah, this is designed for baby boomers. If you were born between 1946 and 1964, you are by definition a baby boomer. Oh, and I think uh, I think society's kind of shortchanged us a little bit as far as how they value us. And I think we've still got a lot to offer. So live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Thanks for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.